Good morning, folks. Today we're going over the storm development in the Caribbean, pre-earthquake signals, a limited but still useful ozone paper, a look at magnetic fields in Earth's core, and of course, we've got space weather and we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where several small M-class flares have erupted. One may have produced a relevant CME. We have quite a few sunspot groups and plasma filaments to be monitoring, and eruptive activity appears to be slightly on the rise with the potential for more. First, in the details, solar wind plasma pressure is fairly stable, but a flip of the magnetic field embedded in the solar wind, shown in the blue phi angle, allow better coupling with the Earth system, and this morning the KP index is near 4. We've got unstable conditions, but still short of storm conditions. Quick look at the X-ray flux. We're seeing those M-class solar flares. The one that kicked off the day UTC was of a bit longer duration, and you can see it erupting near the limb here. While the positioning of the eruption means most of the CME will miss Earth, the SOHO coronagraphs do show plasma leaving the right side of the central disk as well. Data missing, but we can still tell it's a wide burst, could have a glancing blow coming middle of the week off this one. And of course, we're monitoring for more since there are a good number of active regions. The most flare-likely ones are the ones we said we'd be watching closely, the incoming equatorial groups. They're not huge, but they're big enough and they're gnarly looking in terms of orientation. Folks, a few times in the last couple days we warned of tropical development in the Caribbean which would then come up past Cuba and become a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. It is developing slowly right now, but it's got nothing but fuel, no upper level shear, and model forecasts are now predicting a major impact to the Gulf Coast towards the end of the week and into the weekend. We'll be keeping a close eye on this the next few days. First up in the articles, more piling on to the mountain of evidence of pre-earthquake signals in both the atmosphere and the ground. From foreshock patterns to atmospheric and ionospheric precursors, this field of study is reaching maturity, electromagnetic evidence of the shaking to come. Up next, we have a somewhat limited paper. They were looking at ozone fluctuations tied to various external stimuli, but the only solar forcing they included was radiance. We know the impact of solar particles and geomagnetic storms is very significant from literally dozens of previous papers, but even this one manages to find a correlation using only irradiance. Lastly on the article front, we've got a new discovery that wasn't supposed to be possible. The Earth's magnetic field strongly works the motion of fluids in Earth's outer core. The new discovery is set to upend current thinking about internal dynamics of planets, including ours. Now I want to see them do the experiment simulating the magnetic pole shift. Members of our e-magazine, observe a review. Today around noon, my time, we're sending out the third of four presentations we did at the mini-conference two days ago. It's just a little preview of what it looks like. This will be the Catastrophism 101 session from Saturday. Link to sign up is below. Next conference is November 30th. We'd love to see you out there. And there's plenty of other events and observer meetups as well. Come see us observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.